Oh man, it's even better than I could have imagined. Wakanda forever! From the old movies of 30 years ago and beyond! To the world of the new films of the last 30 years. To the movies that are now playing, this is Old, New, and Now Playing. And now, here's your host, Will Robinson Smith! Hello and welcome to Old, New, and Now Playing, your time machine through the world of movies. I'm your host, Will Robinson Smith. Thank you so much for joining me on what is Black Panther Weekend. We are finally here. One of my most anticipated movies of 2018 rolled out on Thursday. Finally getting the chance to talk to all of you about it. And man, there's so much to unpack from this movie. So let's just dive right in. And remember, don't freeze. This is your feature presentation. Black Panther is the 18th movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the first to kick off its 10th anniversary celebration. And let's just take a moment real quick to pause and think about that for a second. For a decade, we've been celebrating and going to and experiencing movies from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, starting with Iron Man back in 2008, now we have Black Panther in 2018, and all the amazing films that came in the middle. Just, that's a lot of good cinema, guys. So Black Panther picks up shortly after the events of Captain America Civil War. Chadwick Boseman returns as T'Challa, whose father, T'Chaka, died in the explosion blamed on the Winter Soldier. As T'Challa implied in the last movie, he must now take on the mantle of King. And with the power of the Kingdom of Wakanda on the line, he's not the only one with an eye on the throne. Enemies like Ulysses Claw, played by Andy Serkis, and Eric Killmonger, played by Michael B. Jordan, attack from the outside. Meanwhile, forces like those controlled by Winston Duke's M'Baku strike from within. The cast is rounded out by some incredible actors including Academy Award winners Lupita Nyong'o and Forrest Whitaker, Oscar nominees Angela Bassett and Daniel Kaluuya, and general standouts Danny Gurira, Letitia Wright, Martin Freeman, and Sterling K. Brown. It's hard to think of exactly where to start with when talking about this film. I mean, I remember when my brother called me Thursday night after his screening in California and we were just speaking in like sentence fragments for the first 45 seconds of our conversation just thinking about, oh man, it was so cool when, and do you remember Forrest Whitaker and all of the things, but really if you think about it a little more calmly, you probably have to start the conversation with the man who is responsible for giving us uh, this story and this rich world, not, you know, Jack Kirby and, and Stan Lee, but for this movie, I'm talking about the co-writer and director, that would be Ryan Coogler. If you didn't know the name Ryan Coogler before, it's probably one you'll be hearing a lot more after this. He's the writer and director behind the critically acclaimed films Fruitvale Station in 2013 and Creed in 2015, both of which starred Michael B. Jordan. And in a lot of ways, Black Panther is the sum of those two movies, both in elements on and off the screen. In Fruitvale Station, we see Coogler tackle a smaller, more intimate story about the life and struggles of Oscar Grant, played by Jordan. We also see his ability to take us into a world and really make us care about all of the characters in it. In Creed, we see that not only can he direct action exceptionally well, but he can also enter an existing cinematic world and add something that feels fresh, but connected. Also off the screen, there are some early ties that pay off in Black Panther. Forrest Whitaker, who plays Zuri, one of the elders in Black Panther, was one of the producers of Fruitvale Station. He came on board after seeing Coogler's film work at Sacramento State University. Other behind-the-scenes threads include Academy Award-nominated cinematographer Rachel Morrison, who also worked on Fruitvale Station, and Swedish-born composer Ludwig Gurason, who composed all of Coogler's films to date. Thanks to one of my mentors, Dr. Roberto Pomo, I had the wonderful chance to briefly meet Coogler when he screened Fruitvale Station for a Sac State crowd. And while of course I don't know him exceptionally well, unfortunately, um, it is really cool to see the success that he's had with Fruitvale Station and Creed, and now the early success he's seeing with Black Panther. Part of what makes this film great is that Coogler is able to weave in so many themes and genres together in a way that feels organic and cohesive. At times it feels like a sci-fi action movie, other times it's a James Bond-esque spy thriller. It has commentary on globalism versus isolationism, the treatment of black people in different parts of the world, nationalism, race, familial relationships, love, betrayal. And beyond the writing, a big part of what makes this movie feel so authentic is the score underneath it. 
As I mentioned, Ludwig Göransson is the composer of the film and does a wonderful job of fusing authentic African sounds and instruments with hip-hop and the symphonic sound you would expect from a superhero movie. According to Variety, Göransson traveled to the West African nation of Senegal to record hours of sounds and music before heading to South Africa for more research. And beyond all the fantastic things that are happening behind the curtain, Kugler was also able to get some really excellent performances out of his actors. Poison command of the screen is something that comes seemingly effortlessly to Chadwick Boseman. He's the anchor of the film, of course, as Black Panther and the newly crowned king, T'Challa. But he's also had quite a bit of practice playing central black figures in biopics like Get On Up, 42, and Marshall. Bozeman only builds on the swagger he's established in Captain America Civil War. Now we really get to see what it means to be a superhero king and Bozeman gives us a great performance. And it only helps that Bozeman is flanked by an incredible ensemble. It would take far too long to go through all of them, so I'll just focus on a few standouts. Denai Gurira is an American actress with parents from Zimbabwe who really steals just about every scene she's in. She plays General Okoye, the leader of the Royal Guard who protects the King of Wakanda. She has a no-nonsense attitude and a sense of command that calls for respect from everyone, including T'Challa. And there are a couple of other standouts that you should keep an eye on when watching this movie, those being Letitia Wright and Winston Duke. Wright plays Shuri in Black Panther, who is the genie's younger sister of T'Challa. She has a really fun, youthful energy about her and creates a storyline of new versus traditional that the film explores in part through her relationship with her brother. Something else cool about her character is her hyper-intelligence. During a set visit, producer Nate Moore told the outlet Screen Rant, quote, She's the smartest person in the world, smarter than Tony Stark, but she's a 16-year-old girl, which we thought was really interesting. Again, black faces in positions of power or positions of technological know-how, that's a rarity. So, it's something that's a big part of the film. The character works so well because Wright brings an airy innocence combined with a competitive fire that makes her a lot of fun to watch. The other newcomer to keep an eye on is Winston Duke, who plays M'Baku. He's the leader of the Jabari Mountain Tribe who challenges T'Challa for the throne. Not only does his 6'5 stature give him a presence, especially against Chadwick Boseman, but he also gives off a unique energy that's bolder than some of the other characters, but also feels regal in its own way. As I was waiting in line to buy my ticket for its second screening of this movie, I was struck by the multi-generational audience that this film is bringing in, especially among the African-American community. And to borrow a phrase from Mark Bernardin, who is a writer for Variety, I think part of what that is all about is the fact that this film really celebrates what he calls black glory. Certainly in recent years we've seen more black-led movies, which is great of course, but they tend to center around black strife or historical struggles. What's great about Black Panther is that we experience a world of black exceptionalism and power that doesn't have to rise up and earn its place in the world. It's beautiful and powerful in its own right from the get-go. The other commentary that's going around about this movie is comparing it to other black-led superhero movies that came before it. Honestly, some of them are just straight up bad. Um, <clears throat> looking at you, Steel and Catwoman. But one of the great things about Black Panther was its ability to not only assemble a predominantly black cast, but also have a lot of minority representation behind the camera as well. One to compare it to would be 1993's The Meteor Man, which was written, produced, and directed by its star Robert Townsend. But when you look at what Black Panther assembled, it had a black director, black writers, a black producer, a female executive producer, a female cinematographer, a black female production designer, the, the list goes on. And I think whether people really know going into the movie that it has all that representation behind it, there's just an authenticity that oozes from the film that I think a lot of people, both in the African American community and outside of it, it's just something that we all really gravitate towards, something that feels authentic. All in all, this is an incredible movie and absolutely one worth seeing on the big screen, I'd say multiple times. The visuals are stunning, the story is excellent, and it expands the Marvel Cinematic Universe in an interesting direction as the final movie we'll see before our heroes take on Thanos in Infinity War. I give Black Panther a 10 out of 10. This movie exceeded the high expectations I had for it, which makes me really happy. So those are my thoughts on Black Panther. When you've had a chance to see the movie, jump back in the comments section and let me know what you thought about it, and where does it stack for you among all the Marvel Cinematic Universe films? I think, for me, it's definitely top five, maybe even top three. I'd, I'd, you know, I'd have to sit down and really think about that. Maybe that's, maybe I'll make a top 10 list for uh, right before Infinity War comes out. That might be something to look out for. But anyway, that will do it for this episode of Old, New, and Now Playing. If you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up. That would be great. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to keep up to date with all the reviews and other videos that are coming out in the very near future. And 
As always, thank you so much for watching and I uh, will see you next time.